In the last few days, we found out that Star Wars has lost money. It's not making the return on investment that Disney expected. Of course, if all of you out there have been watching channels such as this or Valiant Renegade or Midnight's Edge, you already knew that because we already brought the numbers to you. But now it's in the face of everybody who doubted. It is in the major publications, particularly Forbes. Well, folks, it's getting worse for Star Wars now, and we're here to tell you exclusively who they are likely to be losing. Based on the fact you clicked on this, you already know. It's time to say sayonara to John Favreau. Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Pro Channel. We are so happy to have you here explaining entertainment, keeping you ahead of the culture curve. And today we are taking a mighty big chance, but one that we believe in because we are putting our reputation on the line yet once again. Last year with a 92.5% accuracy rating for all of our scoops and rumors, including when we told you that Daisy Ridley would be coming to Star Wars Celebration and would be returning as Rey. Now, whether or not that movie gets made, the announcement and all of that still happened. Joining us today to talk about what could be going on with John Favreau is Marvin. Marvin, welcome back. Hello, my friend. Good to see you, pro. Uh, yeah, I, what a uh, tumultuous, like, I was going to say the week for Star Wars, but like, what a tumultuous, like, decade for Star Wars we've had going on, right? Like, ever That's since right. Now, Marvin, uh, I said welcome back, but let me correct myself. This is your first time on the channel. And folks, if you are not yet uh, subscribed to Marvin and his stuff, his link is down in the uh, description below. If you like Floral from Under a Rock, you're going to love Marvin. Let's get into this topic, though, and see if you love it. This is out of thatparkplace.com. I am the author, but I am not the source of the information because this comes from three sources with a great track record. But, folks, mm. we are entering into rumor and speculation territory officially because we are talking about future actions which have not yet happened. And just like you might be planning to go to the bank later today and something could get in your way, well, the future is yet undetermined. But this is exclusive. John Favreau, unlikely to continue working on Star Wars projects after the Mandalorian movie. We're going to show you why that is in just a moment. It says the birth of the Mandalorian series put Disney Plus on the map, but the era of believing they can catch Netflix is long gone, as are the days of Star Wars fan excitement surrounding potential stories ahead in a galaxy far, far away. For John Favreau, directing the Mandalorian movie could be the end. Now, we're going to skip some of these uh, first paragraphs that explain to folks out there who might not follow Star Wars closely uh, other than to say that if you think Star Wars is not in a bad spot, if you doubt that Star Wars is having a hard time, go check in on Hasbro. See how they're doing with their Star Wars tours. Oh, because, man. yeah, Hasbro Hasbro had uh, a contract of what they probably believed was the best merchandising partner in the world with Star Wars. Marvin not going well. Hasbro had to lay off 20% of their entire workforce. Many folks out there think Hasbro might go bankrupt in the next years. So uh, not good at all, especially when Star Wars toys were supposed to be the best, the very best in the market. If there Unless has been one, yeah, if there's been one thing that's ever defined Star Wars, it's been the merchandise, right? Like, you know, George Lucas, you know, very famously, you know, maintained the merchandising rights. Star Wars toys have been a part of so many childhoods over the years. And it, it's amazing to think that they're just not a thing anymore. Like you walk through and you see like, you know, the last Jedi was kind of when it started. That was when you started to see the, you know, the action figures piling up on the shelves in the, you know, in the 590, in the 499 bin, we are, uh, yeah, we're definitely experiencing the uh, the flushing of the uh, the Star Wars merchandise gravy train, and that stinks for Hasbro. That's right. It's not. It's no longer evergreen. But folks, here is what you've clicked on. This is what we've got on John Favreau. It says, "So it is that the sun may be setting for John Favreau's participation in Star Wars. For the first two seasons of The Mandalorian, he gave us some inspiring Star Wars to work with. Since then, Star Wars has been adrift in not just mediocrity, but downright dumpster fire level bad writing and execution." Now, according to our sources, we strongly believe that The Mandalorian Season 4 has been canceled. Itself a victim of timing and Bob Iger's demand to reduce Disney Plus spending at every possible corner. And also, according to our sources, as well as steadfast research, research of our own, we can say that there are currently no plans for Jon Favreau to participate in Star Wars beyond The Mandalorian movie in 2026. And trust us, we've looked. Yes, there's one quote from Favreau in 2023, but our sources tell us this was his commentary on Lucasfilm looking to do the Ray movie. Here's what had folks, Marvin, this is what had folks thinking that John Favreau was going to be around right. for a long time. Let me show you this quote. This is via okay. StarWarsNews.net. He said, there's definitely a conversation that's going on. And then also what happens after the sequel trilogy, because the sequel trilogy only takes place over the course of a few years. Thank goodness. 
And it's a big thing on the screen. No, it's not. And it's very eventful. Eh. <laughs> but it's a relatively brief moment in history over the course of the thousands of years that Star Wars takes place. And so what happens after it is interesting, too. And I know there's some discussion, exploration going on about what happens after it. So I think that there are certain markers that we have. It's almost like studying ancient history. Yada, yada, yada. This had folks, Marvin, excited that John Favreau was going to stick around and do some stuff post-sequel trilogy. Our sources now say that was just the Ray movie. That, that's what that is. They're looking to do the Ray movie and maybe an additional Ray movie it's, if it's successful. It won't be. Marvin, no. tell me what you think is going on with Star Wars right now. What kind of a place is it in? And specifically, if John Favreau leaves, and we'll get into the John Favreau stuff a little bit more in just a moment. But what mm -hmm. are your thoughts? Yeah. So John Favreau kind of came in, you know, as, as like this white knight for Star Wars, right? Like the Mandalorian hit the ground running for Disney Plus and everybody th that first episode of the Mandalorian, that last few minutes where you saw Grogu for the first time broke the Internet. All right. Mandalorian season one, pretty beloved. I mean, look, yes, you can say certain things about how it's like video game fetch quests all leading into, you know, a season finale. But you look at the last big thing that anyone freaked out about Star Wars with, like the thing that united everyone in a this is awesome moment. That was Luke Skywalker at the exactly. end of season two. That was a return to form. That was John Favreau putting his mark on Star Wars. And look, John Favreau is a guy that knows a thing or two about taking franchises and shooting them to the moon. This is the guy that gave you the first Iron Man. You know, he is the godfather of the MCU. And, and you know, so, so Marvin, let me ask up. you a question about that specifically here. So you're right. They broke the internet with the Luke Skywalker thing. In fact, they mm -hmm. broke it so, so much that for the very first time ever, Disney Plus, which was then a very tiny platform, became the number one streaming platform in terms of uh, top show on streaming. Beat Netflix for the very first time. Uh, the Mandalorian season two, the final episode defeated The Office, which was at the time the number one every single week. And so you would think, Marvin, that if you managed to do that and you were Lucasfilm or Disney or anybody with any kind of uh, brain cells, that you would say, huh, this Luke guy in this kind of form is pretty darn popular. Uh, full steam ahead. We're going to do that. Why right. do you think that they completely, beyond the Gina Carano situation, why do you think they completely abandoned what was clearly like lightning in a bottle again. So here's the thing. Luke Skywalker is, he is a, a symbol of everything that I think that the current regime over at Lucasfilm hates about Star Wars, right? George Lucas creation. You know, he's, he, he's a dude. He's, you know, he's a, uh, you know, part of the original trilogy. People, you know, old fans have like a respect and love for him. If you want to just see, the impact that a character can have on pop culture, go on YouTube and, and find a, 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 you know, reaction video compilation of people just watching that Luke Skywalker moment. It brings you to tears. And they were, and Kathleen Kennedy's Lucasfilm was mocking people like star Wars theory. I was, was going to say Marvin easy. Now Pablo Dago, he'll start making fun of you any moment. I now. know. Careful. I know. Careful. Pablo Hidalgo, bring him on, bring him on. I welcome you. Pablo Hidalgo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got a lot of things I want to say to you, pal. But you are seeing a departure from what we've been, you know, let the past die, kill it if you have to. That is the motto of modern Star Wars. That is Kathleen Kennedy wanting to remake Star Wars in her image, literally her image, because every main character we get is a self-insert of Kathleen Kennedy. It's a snarky white brunette lady. Uh, you know, Luke Skywalker was a step back to that. Luke Skywalker was our hero. He's not the hero that they want for this mystery audience that doesn't exist. This modern audience, this myth of the modern Star Wars audience. They're clearly not there. They're clearly not there. Well, here's what the rest of the article says. Favreau has had his fourth season of The Mandalorian. And this is a source, by the way, speaking directly to us. Favreau has had his fourth season of The Mandalorian painstakingly mapped out, ripped from him. Now he's making a movie out of the last two episodes he had planned, but they're not even uh, his. Dave Filoni is brought in to plus those two episodes into something theatrical that can be tied into his Thrawn slash Ahsoka story. Imagine being Favreau and you're finished out, you were finished out your contract with a movie and the guy in the cowboy hat with no theatrical experience is now co-writer and co-director. That might yeah. They might not call him a co-director yet, but I wouldn't count him out given his position at Lucasfilm and his desire to build a resume in film. Now, I want to show you this, Marvin. If we click, so, you know, mm -hmm. John Favreau has a, uh, he has a production team, a, a studio, right? So he doesn't really work directly for Lucasfilm. 
he's contracted out through his uh, through his company. So if we click on Gollum Creations, which is uh, Favreau's thing that does Star Wars, made in 2018, guess what? Nothing. It's nothing a splash there. page. Wow. There's nothing there, uh, and and there's there's no projects that we can find at all regarding uh, anything that John Favreau might be tied to after the Mandalorian movie. There's just nothing that we see. There's no, if we go and look for, you know, jobs that are being posted for people to come work on sets or anything like that, there, there's nothing. So it, it's it looks to me nothing. like Favreau's done. What do you think? You look, you look, what we were just talking about, the Luke Skywalker thing, like, yes, it beat Netflix, it beat The Office. Maybe you think to yourself, hey, this guy who was in charge of this thing that everyone universally loved, character or not, this is a guy that understands what Star Wars fans want. This is a guy that can make us money, but it's not about making money anymore. We get the, uh, what is her name? Shamin Obey Janoy doing the Ray movie where all she wants to talk about is how she likes to make men uncomfortable. Yeah, that's the person we need doing Star Wars going forward, not John Favreau. Oh, yeah, forget John Favreau, the guy that gave us Iron Man in the Mandalorian seasons one and two. Let's get Harvey Weinstein's personal assistant in here. These are the, these are the activists that they are handing the keys to Star Wars over to. And hey, yeah, Marvin, I, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Let's get in their heads, okay? Because because sure. you know we're making them sound like uh, the kind of people who hate puppies and kittens. And I gotta say, I, I sort of lean in that direction. I know it's yes. cartoonish, but they're, <laughs> it's they're easy to. They've reached that point. Um, they've they've earned it, and they've worked really hard to earn it. So we'll grant it to them. But Marvin, if I'm Disney, if I'm Bob Iger, and even if I'm Kathleen Kennedy, it is clear to me at this point that what Favreau did with the first two seasons of The Mandalorian, when he's allowed to do mm -hmm. what he wants to do then good things come to you and your franchise and your company. And vast, vast amounts of money as you think about everything that would uh, come away from that, right? Going down that ecosystem into the parks and into merchandising. And when I look at Filoni after Ahsoka, I mean, maybe that was just a really bad first live action uh, you know, attempt, but yeah. I got to be really worried about the idea that Favreau leaves and Filoni's the only guy in town who's been a part of this because I don't, I mean, everything Filoni has touched, the more and more power he gets over it with the live action Disney Plus shows, the worse and worse things get. Why? Why do you think, Marvin, that they wouldn't throw buckets like giant bags of money at Favreau and anything he wants and say, please, you have to stay. Please don't leave us. I feel like we've all worked with that person who is this is the way I want to do it. All right. This is this is my way. And you say to them, hey. There can be another way that we can do this, and they don't want to hear it. I think that's Kathleen Kennedy, and we have heard rumors for years that the two of them butted heads on a lot of things. We heard rumors about interference in Boba Fett. We heard interference about uh, interference in The Mandalorian Season 3. John Favreau writing himself getting killed off by one of the Praetorian gods from The Last Jedi. I mean, if that wasn't symbolism, what is? I think John Favreau is a disruptor, and she just wants people that will say, yes, Kathy, Yes, I'll do whatever you want. And that's what Filoni's doing because Filoni is now going from a guy who worked on, you know, successful cartoons, Avatar The Last Ebb, End of the Clone Wars. He's now getting to make these big, huge blockbusters and now he's getting into, into film. And How can he be I this think, bad at it, though, Marvin? Think about I'm that. I'm shocked that Avatar's he's this bad one at of it. the greatest car Avatar's one of the greatest cartoons ever made. It might be the greatest. How can you go from that and, and, you, and you give us Ahsoka? Like, that was Thrawn is the worst enemy I have ever seen in any property whatsoever. Which is insane. Inspector if you're an Gadget extended had better fan. villains. I know, I know. It's an, if you're an extended extended universe fan like I was, if you wasted a lot of money on books and comics and things to see what they turned Thrawn into in live action, you were just like, oh no. Like, it, like he's going to show up and Luke Skywalker is not going to be involved with him at all. Like, it's going to be him versus like a bunch of old ladies. Uh, the the action, even the action sequences, they were just slow and plotting. And I got to I got to tell you, he fooled me in the first like two episodes because there were a couple moments where I was like, man, I'm actually kind of digging this. And then I thought about it and I was like, wait, no, I'm not digging this. I'm digging Rebels. Right, I, everything right. that I liked was something, oh, look, there's the ghost. Oh, look, there's Hera, there's Chopper. Like, these are the, the thoughts that I'm having, and that's why I'm tricked into, oh, look, there's Anakin. I'm tricked into thinking that this is good because I'm being fed member berries. Well, Marvin, now, if this is truly Favreau's final act with Star Wars, mm -hmm. and if this is a complete and total desperation move by the Disney company to reinvigorate Star Wars, 
then you've got two things colliding there. And I, we've heard rumors, and I just wondered what your take was on this. We've heard rumors that that they might be inclined to put the original trio back together in CG form, whatever they have to do, but put uh, Han, Luke, and Leia together in the cockpit with the with the shot. Five seconds, ten seconds doesn't matter. Um, do you think that would be wise for Favreau and I guess Filoni if he's going to write it? Do you think it's wise for them to to go for that? Is that really the last play that they have with Lucasfilm to try to draw audiences? I, I think it is, and I think that's I think that a lot of people watched Ahsoka the way I did and didn't figure it out because like I still have a lot of friends that were like I like Ahsoka and I said why and they're like oh the ghost you know things like that I think that they know <laughs> that nostalgia is like a thing that they can poke at and if they can put Han Luke and Leia in that cockpit and give us what they failed to give us in this in the poorly in the not even planned out sequel trilogy I think that people will see that. And they'll be like, this was a great movie. Just like with the Acolyte, people are going to see lightsabers and that's as far, that's as deep as they're going to go. Oh, they're I don't think so. I think, I think we're, I think we've went too far at this point. I think the ratings and, and the box office numbers bear out that Star Wars has so. deeply declined. You know? I hope, I hope people are not that clueless. I hope that they're not that shallow, but I, I do think that they're going to be like, okay, well, the Luke Skywalker thing worked. We'll just give him this. And then the rest of it will be all our stuff and just surrounding this one moment. What's the one thing? Rogue One. Look, everyone likes Rogue One. I kind of like Rogue One. I never really felt the need to watch it again, except for the Darth Vader scene. <laughs> like, that's kind of the formula they've invented. Okay, we'll give you this one thing that you could point at and be like, I remember that from when I was a kid. And we'll surround it with the. And that's not in Star Wars. Well, you know, we, we're very careful about uh, not doing any kind of profanities on this channel because we want uh, parents and kids to be able to listen yes. to, the, to the show in the car and it needs to be safe for work. But folks, I got to tell you, the Darth Vader scene from, uh, from the movie, that's bad action. Bad action, of course. All right. Yes. Uh, Marvin, tell us a little bit about your channel because folks out there may be uh, getting introduced to you for the first time. You're sure. similar in what you're doing with Floral. Uh, mm -hmm. but not exactly the same. Tell us the differences and why folks might want to check out Marvin the Movie Mon the excuse me, Marvin the Movie Monster alliteration, so, folks. Tongue twister. My, myself, Marvin the Movie Monster, I'm the host of Toonie Town Wrestling. So we are a, a channel that kind of takes a look at the world of professional wrestling right now, WWE, AEW, TNA, things like that. And we, we want to shine a, like a comedic light on it because here's the thing about wrestling fans, pro. They take themselves very, very seriously. And I kind of looked at that and I was like, maybe you shouldn't. So I started creating song parodies about, you know, things like AEW. I have I have puppets that are um, I have a Triple H puppet. I have a puppet of AEW owner Tony Khan. And we do skits. We 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 pick apart that wrestling headlines. And, you know, we have we have fun with it along the way. We kind of um, weekend updated a little bit. Only it's funny. Um, and I do I do song parodies like, you know, Tony Khan just said that he he feared for his life at this backstage incident that happened like a real life incident and so i did now i feared i feared for my life you know <laughs> we 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 like to have fun with that kind of stuff and we also have a live stream wrestling show toonie talk wrestling every tuesday night at 8 p.m live on youtube and that goes up you know on, on the channel right after um we've seen explosive growth people are really digging what we're doing and i could not be more honored just to 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 be kind of like sitting at the wheel for that ride. I mean, you know, we're a four month old channel pro. I mean, hey, four months fantastic. old. Fantastic. Look at you. Look where you're going. Yeah. 30, and Marvin, you know, 3,100 subscribers just going amazing. Like, and I, I hope every, if you like wrestling, come on out. Eventually, we're going to start doing other things. We're going to start talking more comics. We're going to start talking more movies. We're going to start talking more TV. But right now, I'm just kind of focused on that one niche because I think it's kind of where I'm needed. <laughs> And Marvin, uh, I don't know if you know this, but I am uh, quite the aficionado when it comes to accents, and I detect an Alabama accent for sure from you. So, do you, uh, folks? Oh, yes, definitely, one hundred percent. I can, I can play a mean banjo. I can tell you that much. <laughs> All right, folks, it's time for you to play a mean banjo on that like button. Only click it one time, though. It's one string and only one pluck. Please share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell, and drop a comment down below because yes indeed we covet your comments we care about what you think folks don't forget that the pro show is live on tuesdays noon eastern and it is now up to all of you to track this rumor and see did pro get one right again or will this go in the incorrect bucket there's not many of those over the past year we'll see if we can maintain that track record this time and we'll see what happens with john favreau folks wherever you are and whatever you're doing keep learning keep growing 
And as always, keep having fun. Listen up, my brothers and sisters. You've been listening to Phil's and Zoe's with an agenda to destroy your brain cells for far too long. It's time to change your way of doing things. Oh, job. TPP is a place to be. Covering the news so honestly. It's a team that's cool and tried and true. Ahead of the culture group they're trying to keep you. Jonas and Pro, they run the show. And they dragged in the bearded culture casino. You got Valiant and Lord and Fourth of Line. Wonderful people, yep, yeah, they're all right. They got weird bringing in people like Flora, but made no mistake with Lorena Creole. Amelia and John, stuttering guitarist. Martin and Tani, and someone called CMS. Fat Steven makes a bunch of all the graphics. Did I mention a partnership with Bending in the comics? That guy is a guy, and Doc Matt does the web stuff. There's probably some people I missed. I hope they're not uh, telling you the news that should be fun. With accurate info that's not been spun, you can figure it out as you will see. The TPP is the place to be. Yeah, oh, Wilton. Yeah, that was actually pretty good, or white. But I, I think you might have forgotten Vash. Well, he lost all his friends. But it was implied. <laughs> uh.